Well, hello there, friends. Jeremy Carr coming to you, your fearless instructor, Dr. Carr, or Mr. Carr, however you want to call me. And we're going to talk a little bit today about the research project topic selection process. It's not a very easy thing to accomplish, and I get a lot of students every semester who ask me, what is the right way to pick a topic? What do I want? What am I looking for? How do I get the A in the research project, which is due at the end of the semester, by the way? Um, well, let's just talk real briefly about what the reality of this class is all about. It's really just an overview of Earth and space sciences. We don't have a lot of time to go into really gory details, and that's what this research topic is all about. This research project really is all about, is uh, giving you a nice opportunity to go into a topic in a little more detail than we would, let's say, in a, in a general lecture or a laboratory setting here. So, with this in mind, we're going to do a couple of things today. I'm going to give you some characteristics of what it means to have a good research topic, and then we're also going to give you some, uh, some resources that you can consult as you're trying to plan on putting your research topic together. Uh, so this is a, these are two very, very important things, and the goal here is to try to balance out the practicality, so like how do we get the grade that we want with the actual science? So how do we get the two of these to kind of live harmoniously here? And hopefully we'll get a, a this this presentation will give you a little bit of an idea as to what we're looking for. So I want to start real briefly with this picture of this man over here. This, his name was Wilhelm Rankin. He was German and he was a physicist, as a matter of fact, did a lot of his research in the late 1800s and early 1900s. And one of the things that he was really interested in was studying this light bulb of sorts. It was called a Crookes tube. And uh, what Rankin discovered was is that if you take Crookes tube, this Crookes tube and you actually wrap it in uh, paper uh, and then turn it on, well, he had uh, some salts that were in his laboratory. When he turned the Crookes tube on, the salts began to kind of have this like fluorescent sort of a property to them. And so he was really kind of curious about sort of what it, what was going on there. And so he devoted the next uh, several months of his life to really understanding what was causing this glowing effect to happen in his salts. And these were um, cyanide and palladium and barium-based salts for whatever that's worth. Uh, but long story short, he was able to determine that these invisible light rays that were being generated by the light bulb were, were actually causing the glowing to actually happen, and they had a unique property to them. They were able to pass through human tissue, so things like skin and cells, and uh, they were absorbed by things like bones and metal and all that kind of stuff, and this happens to be the, uh, the origins of, of radiographs. But here's the point in all of this. Um, this wasn't possible, this discovery wasn't possible without doing doing a little bit of research, and that's what you're going to be doing in this. Now, you won't be at Rankin's level, I promise you that. Um, maybe not at this point, maybe in the future you will, but we're going to explore a little bit. That's really what the whole goal of this project is about, right? So why would we do it in the first place? Well, sometimes your teacher's making you. This is kind of the requirement of this class. It isn't kind of, it's exactly a requirement in this class. Sometimes you just have a genuine curiosity, right? There's something that you've always wanted to know. Um, sometimes you're just trying to solve a problem, right? We call that necessity. And um, maybe you're part of a team that's that's uh, that's trying to solve a, a, a big problem and you're making a minor contribution to that. All of these are real valid reasons for why we would want to do a research, really. to The goal here is to sort of answer a particular question that, we're, that it is that we're looking for. And so with this in mind, students will oftentimes ask, um, where do I go? How do I go about finding a research topic? Um, I love this picture right here because this is uh, Phil Donahue. He was a talk show host back in the in the 1980s and into the early 1990s, and he's interviewing a man named Brian Warner, which some of you folks may know as Marilyn Manson. And um, this is an actual picture. And the key here is is that. Uh, we want to focus on your personal interest. Now, if you don't know anything about physical science, you don't know anything about how the Earth works or how space works or anything, that's okay, not a problem. But if you do, and you've always had a question about something, this is a great opportunity, this project is a great opportunity to go explore it a little bit here. So, let's look at a couple different topics, uh, just as examples here, and let's show you what sort of the good char or characteristics of a good research topic really are all about. Remember, Try to find that personal interest, something that you find interesting to research, and then we'll kind of come from that. So here you go. Um, best topics manageably answer a specific question. Okay, so we have a little grid here on the left-hand side, and I, what I've done here is, and I've got my little 
cursor here, I've um, broken this grid up into a couple different regions here. So we have general and specific, right? That's the types of topics that we're talking about. And then we have manageable topics and then complicated topics. And really what we're looking for here is this sweet spot right here. You want a specific topic that's manageable. So this is number four. We'll get to this one here in a second. Let's look at each one of these instances, an example of each one of them, and I'll show you why it might be inappropriate for this type of a class that we're having here. So uh, very general topic, very manageable topic. Um, well, let's take a look at our first one. Uh, that's the moon's geology, right? So we have some students that might want to pick a topic and say, hey, I want to study the, the geology of the moon. The problem with that, though, is, is that it's too general. It's not specific. We want to go a bit more general than that. When I say a bit, I mean a lot more general in this one. Um, the one underneath there to the right of it here, this is an instance where it's general, but the topic is a little too complicated, right? So what do I mean by this? Um, you might pick a simple topic like the geology of the moon, right? Fundamentally simple, but look what we're doing here. This is the geology of the moon, Mars, Venus, Mercury, Mars's moons, um, and its relationship to the earth. So remember your research topic, it's not a 700 page book. You have to get your point across in about five to 10 minutes here. So, you know, really, really complicated topics, not a good idea. How about three? Three is an interesting thing. So this is one where we have a really specific topic, really high specificity, but it's also very, very complicated. And I don't think that that's appropriate for this type of a class. Again, due to time constraints and we want to try to get our topic across uh, fairly manageably, I guess, is the, is the key here, sir. So here's the example. How are solar ultraviolet photons absorbed by atmospheres on the moon, Earth, Mars, Mercury, Venus, Mercury, sorry, misspoke, and then Mars's uh, moons as well. Way too complicated for this class, right? You could spend hours talking about this kind of stuff. Uh, so we're going to shy away from this one. The winner that we see here, though, this is number four. You notice how it's a question that we're trying to answer. Why is lunar dust so dangerous to astronauts? And so it's very specific and it's manageable. You're not talking or tackling 15 different topics at once. It's just a real simple, what is lunar dust and why is it so dangerous to astronauts, right? That's just kind of right there, right across. You could probably do that in about two or three slides right there. I just want to point something out too. Sometimes students will uh, submit topic ideas to me like the moon, and that's not appropriate for a college level research course. We want to be much, much more uh, specific and like I said, manageable. So definitely not something as general as the moon, because you can write literally volumes of books on the moon. Volumes of books have been written on the moon for that matter. Something specific is what you're really looking for. All right, so how do we find good research topics? Here's a quick little list of a bunch of different types of resources that you can consult here. So um, these are these first three to the left hand side. These are all what we call aggregators. So what they do is they take news, they bring them all together into this website, uh, each one of these websites here, and, um, and then they report it. Um, what's neat about all three of these different websites is they have slightly different takes on everything. They have little bits of variations to them, but they um, usually a really wide collection of different scientific topics are, are posted on the website. Um, they have some cutting edge research summaries, which is kind of nice because sometimes if you actually read the research project, the actual research um, uh, data, it can be a little too mucky. And so we want something that's pretty manageable uh, in order to try to understand really what's going on. And these websites are really good at it. Um, they have some pretty good search features on their website. The website's usually pretty well organized in general, and not all of them, but a lot of them will, will have um, images as well too, so to kind of illustrate the point that they're trying to make in that particular summary. So these are some great ones, phys.org, uh, Science Daily, and then Live Science here. I will be honest with you, I use uh, phys.org a lot. I like that website a lot um, for not only physical science news, but I'm a chemist, so chemistry news as well too. Science Daily's a great one. I don't have a problem with it at all. It's a slim down version version of phys.org though. So the reading level is a little lower and it's a bit easier to understand. So it's not so intimidating. I think a lot of students like that as they're kind of learning the scientific lingos um, themselves in general. And then live science, I've not used live science a lot, but I've heard a lot of people report positive things about the live science website here. Now, what all three of these have in common with each other is, is that the language sometimes can be a little dense. So just be kind of cautious about that. And if you need some help interpreting what the, what the article's about, this is why we have instructors reach out. Let me know what's going on. 
um, sometimes the articles can be a little intimidating in some of these cases, and and I have to emphasize this and not a lot. Um, the advertisements, holy cow! Um, each one of these websites have their fair share of advertisements, and they do that really to to drive revenue for their website. Website's free; you got to be able to pay for it somehow. Um, so they put ads up for that particular matter. So um, just be aware of the drawbacks. It's nothing terribly detrimental, but sometimes they can be they can sort of these ads can sort of get in the way. Some other websites I like that tend to compile information. National Geographic is always very, very reputable, as is Smithsonian Magazine, and you have little URLs that are right there. You can always just do a quick Google search for each one of those. Um, what do they have in common? Really reputable, really nice articles, beautiful images. The downside, though, is, is that it doesn't always, each one of these articles that you see on these different websites, they don't always link to the original research. So if you want to get into the kind of the nitty gritty data, um, that can be a little tricky. Um, it is easy to get sidetracked on some of these websites. So it's very common for them to, for example, they may do a, an article on the atmosphere and its relationship to the bats. So you might be drawn to the atmospheric side of things but then get sucked into the bat article um, but remember this is a physical science class we don't talk about bats in this class right that's more biology um, so just be kind of cautious about that in general when you're when you're going to these different websites there's some other great resources too so um, if you're not just looking for these aggregator websites and you want to go to more specific websites more um, I guess discipline specific websites um, there's plenty in geology so of course just geology.com is a good one I like the USGS uh, website there's a lot of great scientific news that's provided there um, oceanography uh, resources really the NOAA website is phenomenal I really like that they have beautiful beautiful images there but there's also oceanography magazine as well I'm not terribly familiar with it but I have heard good things about it um, we use a lot of uh, National Weather Service data in this class um, so that's always an option but then you also have the National Meteorological Library and Archive that's over in England and um, I'm not terribly familiar with the World Meteorological Association website but apparently there's a whole bunch of stuff that's there and then in the astronomy realm the NASA website's good the European Space Agency agency is great and um, I'm a big fan of the JAXA website as well too so that's the that's the Japanese equivalent of NASA it's a Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency so a lot of different resources that you can really kind of pull from click on their links uh, go visit them do a Google search for them and um, you'll find some great 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 ideas for topics there really in any of these websites all right so we have a couple potential topics what are the characteristics of a good one? Why is it that when we say, why is lunar dust so dangerous to astronauts? Why is that a good research topic? Well, I'll tell you, there's a couple characteristics of it. So first of all, it relates to course content, right? So we talk about things like astronomy. We're talking about lunar dust, of course, that is the moon. And then dust, of course, that comes from the ground. So there's a connection to geology right there, which is quite nice. Um, you'll notice here that this is a uh, this is fundamentally simple so if you had to demonstrate an aspect about lunar dust you could do that fairly easily by the way lunar dust is just going to be what very fine particles of the ground that are sometimes they're aerosolized they deposit on surfaces here so um, some pretty simple fundamental ideas right here um, it's easy to find some data about lunar dust so if you just do a quick Google search as I did I looked for uh, chemical reactivity of lunar dust and there was actually some great great articles that got posted or that were, were provided in that Google search so um, great opportunity uh, to, to, to really kind of bolster your argument that you're kind of developing for your research project um, notice how it's formed in a question right here the question mark that's provided here so we're trying to answer a specific question it's not general it's very specific we know we're talking about the moon we know we're talking about dust and we're trying to see what the hazards are associated with it hey I like the topic personally because I thought it was sort of interesting and that's an important point in your research project so you want to pick something that's particularly interesting to you maybe not lose sleep over it but uh, maybe you're thinking about it a little bit outside of class and that's a good thing when that sort of thing happens and then is it researchable? Is that even a word? I don't know. Can I actually find reasonable references for this? And we're going to talk about references in the next video, but that's really what we're shooting for here. Is it researchable? All right, so let's test yourself. Let's see if you learned anything here. So which of the following are reasonable scientific research topics? The solar system. Pause for a second. See if you think that it's a reasonable research topic. So this is a pretty easy one. 
Totally unreasonable. Why? It's too broad. Might be okay for middle school, but it's way too general for college. So we don't want to do something like that. We want to go in a way more detail. Maybe some aspect of the solar system, right? Maybe, uh, you know, what is, uh, or let's say, uh, maybe like how did Earth form in the solar system according to a certain theory, right? Something way more specific than just the solar system. That's not going to be good enough. All right. Is the Bible all pseudoscience? I had a student ask this question several years ago. I like that it's formed into a question. Don't mind that it's necessarily connected to religion in some way or for some way or shape. Uh, there's an interesting connection to pseudoscience here, but in general, I would classify this one as unreasonable. And there's a reason for this, and that is that it tends to still be pretty too general and it, the way it's presented right now, it seems to me like it's leaning a little bit too much towards theology or religious studies. So it's not scientific, right? You'd need way more detail to be able to explain why this was actually connected to science. Just slapping pseudoscience on it, not good enough. You have to go in much, much more detail about that one. Let's get another one. How much rain can be produced from cloud seeding? This is a phenomenally good reasonable, or phenomenally good reasonable, phenomenally good topic. Perfectly reasonable right here. Why do we like it? It's specific. Obviously, it relates to the course. We talk about meteorology in this class, and most likely, it's quite researchable, right? We should be able to find some information about this. So, looks great. And finally, our last one, opals. I think you know this is a big problem. Although opals connect to geology. It is totally unreasonable for a topic like this. Why? Way too general. That's the problem. What about opals? Their formation, their hardness. You got to be more specific in this. Let's play one more game and see if we got it. Okay, so, oh my goodness gracious, my, my, uh, my animations didn't work correctly, but that's okay. We'll just go row by row really quickly here. Um, the game that you're supposed to play here in this case was uh, for each row, you're supposed to figure out which one was the most reasonable research topic. And what do we got here? Uh, the first row, we have rocks. How do CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons, deplete the atmospheric ozone? Uh, Ten factors to consider when landing on the moon. And then insurance claims filed after Hurricane Camille. Well, the best answer on this one is B in this first case here. Uh, why? It's specific. Uh, it relates to atmospheric chemistry, so it's connected to meteorology. So that's a really good one. Um, rocks, way too general. Um, Ten factors when, when to consider when landing on the moon. Um, probably too specific, or not specific, I'm sorry, there's too much to this one. If you were to pick maybe one factor that related specifically to the course, might be pretty good here, but 10 factors, eh, not so much. And then insurance claims, eh, that's not relevant to this class at all. When we look at row two, we can see that the answer in this case is why is Mount Denali so big? But let's look at the other ones. What are the side effects from taking the COVID-19 vaccine? Not relevant to this class at all. So we're not going to allow that to, to do that. I mean, you could do it. The problem is, is that I'm a physical scientist. I can only evaluate physical science. And when you bring a biological or a medical topic to me, I can't evaluate it. And here's the thing. If I can't evaluate it, I can't award points. And if I can't award points, guess what? You can't pass the class. That's the reason why. That's the logic behind it. I had a student a couple years ago who said, how about I do the chemical composition of gopher wood that was used to build Noah's Ark? Fundamentally, sounds like kind of a cool little topic right there. But here's the problem. We're not really doing hardcore chemistry in this class. So um, this would be a really tough stretch here. It, the fact that it's Noah's Ark doesn't really bother me all too much here. But um, the fact that we're talking about gopher wood, which comes from biological entities, right? You have to grow it, not relevant to the class. And yeah, we might you might get away with the chemical composition aspect of it. But again, it connects too much to biology. So I don't like that one. Um, improved magnets for computing. I don't really talk about magnets too, too much in this class. Uh, we do briefly here, but we definitely don't talk about computing and the connection between that and magnets. So it's not really relevant in this class. So not a good one. Plus, it's not a specific one. And then finally, we have the uh, the last row here. How high are the radiation levels on Marshall Island? Very interesting, but um, we don't really talk about radiation levels in this class, so that's probably not appropriate here. Uh, the uh, This one, we have one about glaciers right here, right? Um, too general. Let's get rid of him. And then um, we like this one. Uh, how has the Dead Sea volume changed since the 1970s? A lot of great research. Um, satellite imagery data that actually shows how the 
C's have actually changed since the 1970s. So this is a great topic right here. Um, why do benzodiazepines bind into opioid receptors? So I'm really interested personally in this one, but it's not relevant to this class, right? This is chemistry. This is biology. Probably more biology than chemistry, to be honest with you. Maybe not. I don't know. But it's not relevant. We're not going to talk about that over the course of the semester. So probably not a good topic right there. So hopefully you have a much better idea and appreciation for the types of projects that we're looking for in this class. I hope I was able to maybe give you a couple ideas of, of places where you may want to start looking. And um, I am looking forward to working with you folks over the course of the semester. J. Carr out.